All right. All right. Good evening, friends, and thank you. Namaste. Um, and uh, wherever you are, there are people from outside I know uh, who have logged in, uh, and all the 320 uh, delegates um, on this conversation as of now. Really appreciate you all joining in. I enjoyed the first session thoroughly, Devashish and Team Tagged, uh, especially the way Mukundan started off and then the wonderful inputs from Ved of NSDC uh, explaining the Desh Tag were very inspirational with my uh, colleague uh, Sandeep who, who opened the program. So glad to be here. Friends, this brings us to the most exciting part of the day, probably which is around um, the leaders who are most known to create uh, jobs in the country who are sit in the hot seat uh, is generally not the CEO or anyone else, but it's the, it's the CHROs, uh, is the entrepreneurs who sit and take that seat. So, so glad to have a diverse panel with rich um, experience across. And all the seven panelists um, are going to put up uh, and share their insights with all of us today. And we have uh, designed the format that next uh, 30, 35 minutes, we're going to have a very quick conversation, short snippets, but deep insights in the conversation we're going to have. And I hope you can see us well, and I can request the tag team to uh, remove the presentation so that we can see the panelists and the speakers, and I can welcome them. And uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, can, I, can I request uh, people who are not speaking, they can go on mute. And uh, first and foremost, I would like to welcome uh, uh, Prakriti, uh, head of HR for ABB, representing the energy sector, uh, the sector which is very important when it comes to job. Uh, thank you, Prakriti, for joining in. We have uh, Puneet Khurana uh, heading HR for Policy Bazaar. And you all know that uh, this is the industry that we all look at. We call it our India's sunrise industry. Everybody's talking the new age, new world. And Puneet, you are in that hot seat. So we'd love to hear your inputs. Thank you for joining in, Puneet. We have uh, uh, Samit Tamhane uh, representing the industry that we all realize is the most industry, important industry of our lives in COVID times. Yes, that's the pharma, healthcare. So He's the executive director HR for MSD India. Uh, Samit, thank you very much. He's been a constant participant and a speaker in decoding jobs for the last two years. Uh, thank you, Samit, for being there. Uh, we have Saurabh Shah, Saurabh representing um, uh, uh, the Capita, which is he's the head of HR. Uh, but more importantly, IT and ITS is all over in the news for the, for the offers and the offer drops and for all the good and bad reasons when it comes to talent and recruiters. Most memes go out of his industry. So we would love to hear his perspective. Uh, Saurabh, thank you for joining in. We have uh, Uma Shankar. Okay. Uma is the head of HR India and GM for Robert Bosch. Uh, again, the auto and engineering sector is very exciting. India's job index is defined by your sector. So if the sales go down, people say India is not doing well. If the sales go up, of auto people say India is doing well. So thank you, Uma, for joining us. We are looking forward to your input and insights. Uh, we have uh, Piyush, and uh, Piyush uh, represent uh, the, the company, the organization called Sunstone Adversity, uh, which is an edtech platform. He's the co-founder and CEO, and I've had the privilege on being of the board of, um, of Sunstone, and I'm just so delighted the way this company is creating the next generation of talent for the country, and not like one, two hundred, but thousands of professionals, enabling management and undergrads to be ready for the jobs. Uh, perspective that how will we go about welcome welcome here and uh, do we have anu uh, on the panel i'm not able to see her um, so i'm just checking with the team tagged do we have anu or we go ahead uh, with the panel i i assume that anu is not able to join uh, but anu is a part of the panel she's in switzerland so i wasn't very sure if she'll be able to log in she's the founder and ceo for uh, women in technology uh, and she will probably join in between the sessions, so we will have her as well. So friends, with this, um, I'm going to open the session um, and going to ask questions from our panelists. But before that, I just give you a quick context. You heard the previous session on various numbers, but we all know that India is almost there at a pre-pandemic level when it comes to the number of jobs that we are able to create. But that number still hovers around 4 million or so in international jobs. Reality is, friends, that over next eight, nine years, till about 2030, if India has to remain a superpower and become much more bigger and important and create the security that we require for our youth, then we'll have to generate probably nine to 10 million jobs every year. 
So this topic is very apt, which is plus 10 million. How do we make sure that truly what Atmanirbhar Bharat is all about is how do we create these 10 million jobs or 9 million jobs? I think that's the conversation we're going to have today. I'm not getting into the sectoral insights, but I'm going to keep using those snippets as our experts going to speak with you all. We'll have quick answers, short answers, but deep insights from our panelists. My panelists have given me the approval to cross-question them. So please don't mind if I ask you, but I will be representing those, uh, you know, how many people on that 300 plus panel, uh, this, uh, the delegates that are there on the show. So please uh, pardon me if I ask you a few questions. No, but with this, uh, let me let me ask uh, the first question from probably Puneet. Puneet, when we look at, um, uh, you know, not only just the policy bazaar perspective, but the perspective of the whole e-commerce industry, the new age industry, you know, people are questioning that these digital technologies that you are all deploying are going to take away the jobs. That's what your industry is accused of. So we all love talking about it, but I'm going to just throw up what people's concerns are. People are saying, okay, are you here to create jobs? Are you going to take away the jobs? So we'd love to hear your uh, perspective uh, on how we will go on creating this 9 million jobs. Over to you, Puneet. Puneet, you're on mute. Thanks. Thank you, Pankaj. Uh, thank you for giving me this chance. Um, well, uh, to, to start with, I would not say that we are, we are taking away jobs. Trust you me, I have data and everyone knows, even you know, uh, we have been adding jobs uh, to, to uh, the market. Uh, and I'll, I'll share some, some quick numbers uh, industry-wide and as well as uh, Policy Bazaar and Pesa Bazaar perspective as well. Uh, overall, if, if you ask, uh, pre-COVID, where we were, we have added almost 2,000 to that. Uh, during COVID time as well. So during last two years, uh, we have added about uh, you know 2,000 people to our headcount. Uh, that is not what it should have been if COVID had COVID not been there, uh, because uh, the the idea was to actually add about 5,000. Uh, and if you look at uh, my my outlook for the next one year, FI 22, 23, uh, my outlook says uh, that I'm gonna add about three to five thousand jobs more to this. So next one year, I will add about three to 5,000 heads uh, to Policy Bazaar and Pesa Bazaar uh, over and above current headcount. Yeah. Uh, so we are not at all, uh, though they, we are investing heavily on uh, you know, machine learning, artificial intelligence uh, towards the digitization of the, uh, the entire insurance industry and the lending industry. Uh, but at the same time, we are creating enormous job opportunities for our youth, uh, for everyone to grow with us. Uh, so I'll, I'll share some example why digitization is required uh, at, at the, where we are, spe specifically fintech industry, insurance and lending. Uh, so if, if we really see insurance uh, almost about uh, a decade back, uh, it was typically an agent coming to our house and explaining some insurance policies and we go ahead, take it or we don't take it. Uh, with, with what we have currently uh, you know, on, on our platform is that we can actually compare different uh, insurance plans and it's in black and white right in front of you. So no false commitment, nothing happening. It, it's there in front of you, all do's and don'ts, all the things which are covered, which aren't covered. Uh, and, and then you can choose uh, one and go ahead. Digitization helps us getting a very clear uh, you know, uh, thing to the customer. Uh, it, it's in reach of the customer now. now you know, I don't have to wait for an agent to come to my house and explain me a policy. I just have to log in and say, you know what, this is I, I require. And there, uh, how we... Uh, have an edge on the due to digitization is that even if after reading all these things, I do not have anything clear. All I need to do is I need to put my number and within the next 10 minutes, an insurance agent and insurance advisor from Policy Bazaar calls me and explains me everything. That's digitization. That's how we have, you know, helped the, uh, the, the consumers, the customers. Okay. Uh, and, and not only that, it's, it's easy. It's transparent. Yeah. Uh, as, as again and again, I'm reiterating, there are no false commitments. It's right there in front of you. And yeah. so you are going to add more people, do you think, you and your sector? I don't mean to say only policy bazaar. Do you think? Absolutely. To... Absolutely, we do need to. We do need to. See, insurance penetration in India is not more than 10, 12%. You would agree with me. Yeah. So there is a lot to penetrate. Yeah. And, and digitization obviously will help. But human uh, touch would require over here. Uh, human expertise would require over here. And we expertise uh, in, in training people and making sure that they give the best advice to the people. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, and if we have to grow as, as an organization, we are a public company now, if we have to grow uh, our organic as well as the repeated customers, we have to really go bang on. 
Absolutely. So, Puneet, I'm going to come back to you. May, 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 may you more power to you, to your sector. May Thank you hire thousands and lakhs of people for our country. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Puneet, for this insight. We're going to come back to you. I'm going to move to probably Prakriti. Prakriti, um, you know, your industry is considered, of course, the real industry, traditional industry in many senses, you know, when we think of uh, jobs in energy sector. But give us an example. What happened specifically last year or next year in your sector? Your sector is another important sector that everyone knows the countries and the world today is talking about planet. So, so your quick intervention over two, three minutes, Prakriti. Yeah. So if I look at it, uh, Pankaj, so um, energy sector is also related with how the country overall is doing. If the GDP is growing, there's a pumping of the money that's happening. It's a large projects that it works on. So accordingly, then the industry also booms. So uh, the last year, there are certain segments that evolved, which is more into renewable energy, but then solar and some of the EV charging stations and all that still has to evolve. So that's another area of focus. Now, if I have to little bit expand to that and uh, not just look at the last year, but also look at the overall energy sector per se, um, I think there is a strong focus from the government to make and expand the cleaner energy sources. So even in the latest budget uh, release that happened, sustainable development is being focused on. So um, what I then look at is that there's going to be a lot more focus on um, uh, um, uh, acceleration and adoption of uh, electric vehicles. Uh, there's a, a big uh, push on solar power, on uh, enhancing the nuclear energy, and also making India more carbon neutral economy. With that as a focus coming there, if I look at India as a market, it's a, um, we are the world's third largest energy consuming country at this point. And uh, we are continuously increasing in that space as well, and thanks to the rising incomes and then the standard of living. And also a lot of work which the government has done in terms of electrifying millions of houses and then um, massive expansion of renewable sources of energy to solar to um, actually uh, support the businesses. And so the demand side is also exponentially growing. Now, only thing what I see is that while the traditional skills continues, but then what are the, uh, there are newer jobs that are really uh, getting in and that is something that requires a focus. Um, there's a shift in the way how the energy sector is looking at the talent market. Uh, there's a focus more uh, because the industry itself is getting more focused on innovation. Uh, the industry is looking at trying to bring in newer technologies and, uh, and figuring out the opportunities to transform. So in that context, uh, the segment is also looking at having more of uh, people with AI background who can then bring smart technology into the traditional skills and then make it a lot more um, rich in terms of driving the processes more effectively. Now, while that is happening, those data insights are also being now looked at uh, drawing the inputs and then uh, leveraging data science into that and uh, take the insights and draw the actions. IoT is also driving the entire thing. So uh, basically, um, uh, it is uh, uh, revolutionizing the um, connectivity. I think uh, the uh, rooftop solar panels, to quote an example, is now connected with the smart precision control systems and thus enabling customer better experience. There's a lot more focus on customer experience happening. There's a lot more technological disruption that is happening. Um, so uh, if I look at from a hiring point of view, we continue to hire. The industry has seen a boom there, there as well. But what so I is your net addition going to be higher? See is that the Sorry real, if I ask, um, is net, real growth is, is going to come in the next few years. Is your net addition going to be higher this year? Net addition of people? Sorry, your voice is breaking. Sorry. Yes, yes, absolutely. We are slated for growth. And which are the other skills other than And IOT the growth, or... again, one is on the traditional Yeah, so, uh, so if I uh, look at it uh, predominantly, it is also about all segments. It is um, uh, this, uh, we are also through smart cities, for example, we are also getting into tier one, tier two cities, not just focused on metros. Um, and if I look at this segment, so it also goes to skilled and unskilled sector at different ways because uh, skilled is needed at the layer where they have to ideate and then when it goes to tier two, tier three, Very implementation, installation, all those places. So it really then generates the workforce it's a, across it's all It's a holistic things. growth probably. So I'm going to come back to you Absolutely. again. Thank you, Prakriti, for this. Uh, so two on two. So far, Puneet and Prakriti says the net number is going to increase. Uh, I'm going to come to Samir. Samir, in your industry, which where people are saying, okay, don't talk of curative 
health, talk of preventive health, right? You are at the center of everything that's happening in the world, right? Your industry, sometimes accused, sometimes supported, but we know how hard it is, right? So would love to hear your assessment of talent pool in your industry. Is it going to increase, not increase? Quick intervention from you, Sam. So we can't hear you, Samir. Samir, we can't hear you. Uh, I think it is with most people. No worries. You can just check. No problems. Uh, can you go and uh, check uh, your speakers? Have you aligned your computer speakers with it in the properties? Can I request my colleague uh, to connect with her and... Uh, and just help him. So by that time, I'll come back to you, Samir, because we can't hear you. Uh, in the team, meantime, uh, if someone can call Samir and do the quick help him. Uh, so Pavel, Hello. can you hear? Yes, Samir, yeah. we can hear you now. Sorry, sorry about it. So no thank you so much, Pankaj. And uh, the short answer to your question is yes, there will be net addition that will happen. And I will share why uh, these net addition and which areas it will happen. Sure. So tradition. Nearly when we think of healthcare, we think of mostly pharma. But if we look at healthcare, it consists of different sectors like pharmaceuticals, medical devices, OTC, diagnostic, vaccines, and then hospital infrastructure, which includes pathology labs, etc. What's happening is with over a period of time with changing uh, ecosystem, all this is getting integrated and what we call it as a continuum of care. And this is something that is happening last two years we have seen, and that is also impacting the job market. I'll just quickly give you an example of a US, which is a, a you know mature market. And let's see what's happening there. In 2021, they talked about saying that healthcare occupation will grow 16% in this decade. That is between 2020 to 2030, uh, the employment in healthcare will grow up, uh, grow by 16%. And India is emerging market. So imagine in India, what are the kind of opportunities that are there? Uh, we are expecting to be our population to be about 1.5 billion by 2020, 18% of world population, high disease burden, etc. And government initiatives like universal health coverage, Ayushman Bharat will enhance uh, the healthcare uh, facilities to the people. So longevity, health awareness, infrastructure, access, affordability, this will create a lot of job opportunities across the uh, healthcare sector, not only, as you rightly said, curative, but also preventive health. So traditional pharma roles like medical rep, pharma manufacturing, quality, tech transfer, medical marketing will stay. Of course, these jobs will undergo change, mainly due to digitization and automation of work. But there are core jobs like health, economics, outcome research, policy, market access, digital marketing will also attract a lot of talent. Jobs in pharmaceutical R&D, biomanufacturing, clinical research will increase. And most of us have seen our ability to develop and manufacture vaccines in last two years. And I'm seeing this lot of opportunities in uh, basically uh, basic research, clinical trials and all these areas. Pharma is also seeing demand for regulatory professionals, especially with professionals who have experiences of US and European market. And there is huge opportunity of offshoring such jobs from various countries. With increased incidences of diabetes, heart disease, etc., more diagnostics labs, hospitals will require more doctors, paramedics, nurses, lab technicians, home care professionals. Few new jobs have come up like lifestyle strategist health data scientist, mental well-being coach, health insurance. I even foresee organizations creating wellness manager jobs, you know, which will not be only physical wellness, mental wellness, financial. It would be a combination and organizations may create those wellness manager jobs. Of course, medical tourism will increase uh, once this uh, COVID thing goes over, gets over, which will also enhance. But I'm also seeing, uh, you know, a lot of uh, companies setting up global capability centers in yeah. India yeah. where there is large opportunities. And some of the global multinational pharma companies have already set up these capability centers. So that is huge opportunity. And some new jobs that will come up is like database medical diagnostician genetics coach, healthcare wow. shaper, 
मेमरी ऑप्टिमाइजर वर्चुअल सर्जन दो सम ऑफ दीज रोल्स साउंड टू बी कमिंग आउट ऑफ साइंस फिक्शन बट लुकिंग एट द डिस्ट्रप्शन दैट वी आर विटनेसिंग नाउ आई एम श्योर दीज विल बी रियलिटी सून आई विल जस्ट कंक्लूड बाय सेइंग हेल्थ केयर इंडस्ट्री कैन बी इंजन ऑफ इकोनॉमिक ग्रोथ and this industry can offer immensely satisfying career where one can positively touch many lives apart from achieving uh, career growth so thank you pankaj thank for you. this and over back no, no, to you this was fabulous uh, samir we wish you could have continued i know there are there's so much we have to discuss but we'll come back and you know the award for maximum new category of jobs goes to you and your industry but i loved it i was just leading tag report the sectoral report says that your industry is going thank to go almost 30% and i'm told the gic is that you refer global in house centers the activity is going to be again more than one third of increase so incredible points thank you samir i'm going to come back to you soon uh, with this we move um, to the next uh, panelist friends and i thought i must uh, get the very outside perspective which is enabling all this that's that sunstone's perspective so piyush we will love to hear that what you have witnessed in last one year and what you want to see because the the classes went from so called physical to virtual hybrid the generalized education move to personalized education uh, regulator going after this at tech companies like yourselves growing massively so how are you going to enable this 10 million target for us great great thanks thanks pankaj first of all really honored to be part of uh, this platform and learned some great insights even during the round table sessions and a lot for academia to collaborate uh, with the industry uh tackling your question per se pankaj there is a lot uh which has happened over the last two years and particularly with the kind of disruptions which sort of forced the learning to move digital that also presented a lot of opportunity to to all the players like us who are uh, who are measuring learning outcomes when when students go completely digital a lot of the things which would have otherwise uh, been into a classroom setting now are getting measured to the t and we are able to provide them such adaptive solutions and such tailored learning that we can actually have part of the class at level a and part of the class at level b and another at some other level so that is something which it has enabled and even now after uh, the covid has subsided we did open after second wave a lot of campuses opened up that is when you know we continued with those practices and we continued with those systems which have always which has now continued with us to i'll also take a jab at the 10 million jobs question here if you really look at it's a zero sum game uh, pankaj right uh, eventually people retiring would be very few in number Correct. people falling out will be very few in number if we have to create those 10 million jobs people have to be promoted have to be switching sectors but then there has to be a addition from the bottom as well right. so freshers ought to be contributing a lot more lot, a heavy chunk of this when we are talking about this 10 million jobs and a common insight which i got during even my round table conferences is that there is a lot of retraining which is required right when when we corporates are looking at freshers and that is why everybody looks at them with some suspicion that we need to train them a lot so that is where i think the so academy needs to really move along with the pace because things are so rapidly changing that we can't be stuck to our rote learning methods and we need to be imparting new age industry skills yeah. and enabling them and measuring the learnings so that we can pro- we can be a good responsible talent supply to the industry absolutely no no this is brilliant and i'm going to come back to you but but do you see upsurge in the in the fresher hiring because you're in that segment quick answer on it so uh, i think there was only during 2020 there was a bit of a slow down but both 21 and now even in 22 the sort of enthusiasm which we are seeing from corporates they i think they are just flocking to campuses so that is something which is very encouraging uh, right. both for the sector as well as for the economy as well wonderful thank you thank you piyush for that and may the students get more skilled and um, um, india gets more ready for the freshers thank you for that i'm going to come back to you as well uh, in interest of time move to uma from bosch uma what's your take uh, on the auto industry and the engineering your sector which is considered the true traditional uh, sector for our country but very valuable very important 
quick intervention from you ma thank you pankaj it's been an honor to be part of this panel uh, let me quickly make some over overarching statements the first and foremost is yes jobs will increase but what is very important to note is the nature of jobs will not be in the same traditional format which means i mean just to give you an example when i joined myco in 1989 and we had a group discussion of computerization is it a boon or a bane 30 years later we all know what the story is but let's be honest at that time there was a bank strike going on for two days in protesting against computerization because they would lose jobs we are at some some similar inflection point at this point in time as when it comes to the automobile industry traditional jobs will not be there 2030 probably we will have uh, only 30 or 35% of what we call as jobs today continuing to be there in 2030 but then we will have lots of newer kinds of jobs that are coming in and that's very important to note and then there's something else which i want to emphasize even in automobile industry or maybe even in the other industries too what is job today the definition of of a job today may be very different from 5 years from now because it will completely change wow. so there's a lot of focus in terms of saying what i mean when we say we need to make sure that we have jobs jobs keep changing all the time and we need to make sure that we keep pace with it as technology changes as environment changes as demands change everything will change including the nature of the way we conduct ourselves today there is a there is a very thin line between a software engineer and an automobile engineer because there's so much of software in automobiles that every automobile manufacturer worth his salt is only trying to differentiate features based on software of course so where is the traditional automobile engineer go he starts to code i mean yeah. so you know the nature of job keeps changing but yeah. overall if you look at it from let's say the time i joined myco to what we are today the in terms of the job size of the country yes jobs have have yes. increased tremendously and they will continue to do so in the future wonderful so i'm going to i'm going to come more to you but uh, but you have given very interesting insights on the category that the job may not remain what we call job so will you yeah. call it something else what will you call it is it gig is it work what is it is it output I mean, based work let, let's be clear i'll just give you another example uh, mm-hmm. for example today if you look at the ic engines Uh, if you want to make a diesel engine you probably require about uh, 17 people's effort to make a diesel engine a gasoline engine would be probably much less 10 an electrical vehicle probably one or two people is enough to make an electric That's vehicle right. so right. the traditional job of uh, manufacturing will go down but then there'll be a lot more environmental peripheral value added activities mm-hmm. that will come which will create newer jobs. newer jobs maybe it may inc- increase more than 17 that a diesel engine would uh, Awesome. you know employ but then the subsequent the what we happens. call as the domino effect of these kind of things will have on peripheral industries which will take it much more than 17 really and nice. today we we are not in a position to define or identify what will be the nature of the job and Absolutely. that's clear Absolutely. in 89 when the banks were being computerized nobody realized that they would need a network engineer course, or an architect or anything so i think today yeah today data science is required to a paint company to a to a data sciences company both yeah. a point taken uma thank you so much i'm going to come to uh, to sorab sorab your industry is accused of growing at 60% it's a greatest news but it's also that people don't know how to hire talent people are struggling 30% offer drop 40% offer drop it's crazy people come with 3x salaries right so what's happening give us a flavor and a quick one sure uh, thanks pankaj and i'm really honored to be part of this esteemed panel Uh, as you rightly said, I think I think Mackenzie had mentioned recently that uh, you know in the next couple of years the Indian IT industry is going to be three fifty billion dollars, uh, and that's the volume of opportunity which which we have in front of us. And obviously, with all opportunities uh, comes in challenges, and attraction has been one of the biggest challenge uh, which which probably has has creeped in. uh between the pandemic is what i would say so it's really important uh you know to to uh, refocus and relook at the way we attract talent the kind of talent we we need to attract and i think it's it's extremely important for us to realize if we have not already realized that you know you should not continue looking for the best talent i think you should start looking at what is required uh from you know really creating an outcome you you mentioned about you know what do you call it job work So I think I I would say it's an outcome which you need to create, and to create that outcome, what is the talent which you would need? So is it fifty percent match? Is it sixty percent match? 
what is that core team which you would need and how would you really supplement it through through you know employable freshers through through uh, you know colleagues who have been just out of college but trained and are available for deployment how do you create that entire ecosystem to make sure that they come into the organization and get well fitted in the organization that's one part of it of how do you attract your talent the second very important is retain what you have and then that's the key in in this great resignation era make sure that you retain whatever you can there will be attrition but at least make sure that you know whatever is controllable you know you you look after those aspects and i think the overarching one to all of this is really creating a great place of work we got to remember that employee experience would matter and how do you enhance that employee experience through that journey uh, is going to be the key uh, not only to attract talent but to retain them uh, you know through through development through engagement initiatives making sure that you create enough opportunities i mean within capita last year you know we we created close to 20% of our opportunities were created internally so we did we did deep dive into our own internal talent look at how do we upscale them using the latest and the greatest tools and make sure that you have a ecosystem wherein as i said you attract the the right talent i won't say the best talent attract the right talent retain what you have and grow along along with the curve the last but not the least is uh, i'm sorry Uh, no i was just asking on this point so so you know people are saying your compensation levels are now affordable anymore P- people are saying it's just not going to work is it true no yes it i mean to a certain extent it is true because the market is getting spoiled uh, but but i think i think the way i look at it is and that's why i said pankaj the right talent because you know it, it if you need a 10 member team you know go for three people who are a perfect fit but for the remaining seven either look internally or look at talent which could be trained over a period of time and then you balance out the overall cost but you know so that's how you balance out the overall cost and wow. make sure that you know you you are within the within the the cost bucket no, and and what i was trying to say uh, i think last but not the least is collaboration is going to be the key uh, mm. it is going to be very difficult to say that no 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 i will do everything on my own uh, you know we got to make sure that we've got the right partners who will help us attract the talent we've got right partners who will support us with employable trainable uh, you know uh, employees who will who will be part of the value chain and we will have to have partners who will help us in the overall assessment spectrum as well of when do we create opportunities so that's going to be the key takeaway for me and you know look at how do we they take it ahead wonderful so good for employees salaries are rising but companies are finding it challenging so hopefully we'll find the median and the balance so thank you saurabh and we preserve the best for the last so anu thank you and welcome i couldn't welcome you in between but uh, thank you so good to see you i i know you are outside the country and still join in really appreciate anu your your question is very obvious one you can't expect anything else tell me with all this rise of jobs and the halla bulla and we are seeing from 4 million we can touch to 10 million so do you think the women participation problem in the workforce will get significantly solved if not completely yeah well thank you pankaj and i do apologize for running a few no minutes problem. late uh, no. but lovely to be here <clears throat> excuse me so um, look we all know that in the last two years it's actually got worse not better that is in spite of the talent demand in the market going up um so you know from the, from the platform that i run uh, we do a lot of research and one key uh, issue which is coming up is um you know the real focus is only on tech training i mean today if i don't mind but you look at three leading providers of edtech in india you can actually juggle their curriculum change their names and it's yet the same course so really it becomes a you know play about pricing in it tech for different courses or the brand name of the university that they may be doing it with and what we find with women the biggest pain point right now is nobody is asking me what i want to skill in mm. i want to grow i want to learn i want to do things i certainly want to be financially independent but at my own terms which would mean that i may want to certainly work in uh, different sectors but i may not necessarily want to do ai ml i'm very happy teaching for example and uh, piyush this will be music to your ears because a lot of women think that they want to do teaching courses they can teach and we all know that we can do with better quality teachers in india so there are alternate professions which are out there which will add to the economy i don't need to make a business case for it because there's enough and more spoken about it the challenge we are seeing is the ecosystem is not yet there um i mean very often in my journey when i stepped into doing something around women skilling and employment 
everybody thought it's a non-profit because it's not a mainline business that anybody does. Uh, so it was assumed that it was an NGO, which it is not. Um, also, there is, you know, when we look at the women's space and uh, we look at it from a marketing or a business perspective, what sells is fashion, beauty, makeup, uh, and maybe wellness. Okay, but probably in that order, makeup, beauty, and uh, and wellness. So what I find is there's a lot of push on the women consumers, but mm -hmm. there's much less a push on women employees. Mm -hmm. And very often we get saddled around the social ecosystem and what's happening. But all I want to make a call out is there are women out there who genuinely want to work. They actually want to get skilled. They get a little intimidated when you go into very high funda courses and they switch off. Um, but there are a lot of alternate employment, like from designing to like today morning, we were running, why I was running late is because in our homemaker community, these are all professional women who are on break by choice, yeah. right? Not because their husbands force them and their families force them. They've decided they want to spend three years at home and that's okay. That's absolutely fine. So we asked them, what do you want to do? So a lot of them, the older ones said, look, we cook well. Now we know there is a Facebook and there is a LinkedIn and all of these platforms which provide you super avenues to sell. But guess what? They don't know digital marketing. They don't know how it works. They don't want to get into the jamela of delivery. So what we did was we did a chef prena course uh, to certify them and then tied them to a platform like a Swiggy or a We The Chef In who will do all the other bits of delivery and all of that. So I think that ecosystem is needed, but there's a huge pool of talent 50% of the population in India is women. There are 70 million women graduates. Let's assume that 20 million of them are employable because we know there is an issue with employability, um, but we only have about 3 million women seriously in workforce. So just to tell you the amount of talent which is sitting out there, and all we need to do is get it into mainline focus. I genuinely believe in my 15-month journey, it's not seen as a mainline focus, and that's part of the problem. So no, wonderful. So, so you know, I, I know we all are running out of time, but quick one from you. Do you think this, what do you explain that people are going on Facebook to tell who they are? So the CVs are going to die? The, is it going to be the death of CV? Oh, yeah, we... absolutely. Videos yeah. and all of that completely uh, aligned to that. In fact, a lot of women is like, Likhna kyun padta hai hame? You know, people will tell you LinkedIn profile, le lo, yaar. I do not want to sell my CV. So everything is going digital. Absolutely. Okay, very interesting point. So Anu says that CV death is imminent. And uh, Devashish and team tagged, I'm going to take three, four minutes more. So quick ones, Puneet, uh, one-liner answer. What do you think, who needs to reinvent the most, Puneet? Is it, is it the employers or candidate? Both, both. The employers need to think that candidate mm. is, is, is a resource. Yeah. As of now, it, it, it's not that way. And candidate needs to think that uh, Uma rightly said, uh, you know, the, the old fashioned jobs will not be there. So candidate need to think out of the box as to how do they present themselves to, to the new culture. And uh, the employer need to think, how do I really make sure, how do I really take productivity out of everyone? Got it. And Saurabh, what do you think uh, biggest hiring pain point, and I'm asking you intentionally, is finding the candidate or getting the people to interview or getting them to join? What is tough? Getting them to join, getting people to interview or finding the candidate? I would say getting them to join uh, is 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 uh, one of the toughest one uh, in the pie. Uh, mm -hmm. The other two can still, you know, that, that's more controllable. Oh, but uh, I think the last one is, is, is a bit uh, where, you know, as I said, uh, employee experience will play a critical role. Mm -hmm. And how do you create value for them? Fully, fully, uh, yeah. take it, fully agree. Piyush, do you agree with Saurabh that getting people to join is hard? So do you do you see that? That's a good news for you, right? You should have more than one offer to your... your... Well, I think if the domain being discussed about is tech, I might have a similar opinion as Saurabh there. <laughs> but in general, uh, yes, Pankaj, I do agree. Okay, very good. Samir, what is your view? Who has the power of hiring? Is it the TA, talent acquisition function, or your hiring manager? I think both collaborate. I think that's very, very important because both bring in different perspectives. And that's where I think more collaborative effort from TA as well as, uh, you know, the hiring manager makes a difference. But the final say is that of hiring manager always. Okay. And what is one word you will give uh, for 2022 if you have to predict from a candidate perspective? Like 2021 was the year of candidate. What will 2022 be? It will still continue to be year of candidates. Wonderful. Uma, do you agree with this, that it's going to be a year for candidates still? 
Yeah, it will be at least in the next couple of years, and then the cycle will start all over again. And and in your sector, who holds the key? Is it the talent acquisition function or the hiring manager? I would say it's the hiring manager. In hiring case manager. they need somebody uh, to be acquired at any cost, it works. Very interesting point because this may change the recruiting process completely. Thank you, yeah. Prakriti. Do you agree with Uma? Um, you know, Uma said hiring manager, but previous to that, it was said that both hold the key. Who do you think holds the key? Is it the is it the hiring manager should be empowered more or the talent acquisition team? Uh, I think it is both. If I really look at it, I think they have to collaborate. One, I think getting the talent itself has become so difficult right now. The right talent, they have so many offers already running, and uh, so in that case, getting those right talent quickly, and then the hiring manager also come forward to make those decision quick. So I think it it works more collaborative. Oh, okay, interesting. Thank you, friends. Uh, anu, last question from you. What do you think? Everybody is saying, but do you think it is a good news that talent acquisition holds the key? Or the hiring manager for women who who's better? Talent acquisition certainly because there are too many biases in the system and you need a neutral party under the pressure of sales and P and L. Uh, we know there are short supply of women and uh, that could be an excuse of very problem. interesting point. This is brilliant. Thank you so much, friends. I, I wish we could have continued for a long time, but I think we have exceeded by a few minutes. Uh, but uh, it was so engaging. I wish. Uh, you know, but your insights will come handy. Please do keep writing to tagged and in our sectoral reports. I had so much of data to share, which I couldn't. But overall, uh, numbers are looking very positive as per the tagged sectoral reports. Almost every sector, but specifically auto, IT, ITS, internet businesses, pharma is going to see a stupendous growth, including GICs. So best wishes to India and the job market. May we create 10 million. A big amen to all that, and uh, India starts solving its job problems. It's been much a more political subject, but I think uh, we all will help government to achieve this target. That's the best we can do. Thank you, Team Tag, the CII, uh, Sunstone for hosting this, and thank you, ETHR World, for being the media partner. Um, with this, once again, a big thank you to all seven panelists for being wonderful, candid, crisp, and authentic. Uh, sorry if I had to cut you in between some places, but I just wanted to get the best out of you. for our participants thank you so much a great day uh, thank you namaste and uh, i'm going to hand over back uh, to my colleagues um, manish gupta who's the chief growth officer at tagged uh, you know he's going to take you through over next 5 10 minutes for a platform unveiling which you will like and vivek sethi who's the head of product at uh, tagged they are doing some interesting and mischievous work next 10 minutes and following that is a wonderful conversation a little bit of fun i won't say a stand up but uh the process there is that they're going to predict jobs there will be a 10 question game that they will play so hook remain hooked on stay on the platform and thank you once again over to you manish and vivek thank you